Hey guys, so this is just a follow-up video to my last video where I shared with you guys my 3D printed face shield design and it had integrating folding head straps. And I actually reached out to a number of companies since then that have been printing PPE for frontline workers like nurses and doctors. And one company thought that this would be a great candidate for the COVID isolation unit at Vancouver General Hospital. Now it's my understanding that they trialed it there and it received positive feedback from some of the nurses and or doctors. And that's because it was an all plastic design and it didn't require any foam or any of the fabric that houses the typical elastics that you see on a lot of these prints. Also since then, I've been printing my own design to donate, but I'm very limited with a single printer. And this thing does take a considerable amount of time to print. And that's because it was based off of the original Prussia RC2 design. And in order to accommodate the folding head strap with that little detent mechanism, I had to increase the height of the model, which contributes to more print time. So since then, I've been redesigning this mask and I came up with something that I think works really well and it achieves three major things. So the first one is it continues not to use any sort of elastic or foam in the design. The second thing is that it, of course, decreases the print time dramatically so I can print more of them and faster. It's much more efficient. Then the third thing is that it allows you to adjust the angle of the front face shield. So I went about experimenting with different models that I found online. Some of them had very clever friction fits for the face shield like this one here. And it worked great in theory, but in practice, they were very unreliable and it was very difficult to get the actual shield in there. Other ones had very simple frames with very fast print times. But then once you got the actual shield on there, the frame distorted the shield into a sort of a weird shape and even distorted your vision a little bit. And so I tried to take the best features from all of these different masks and I tried to work them into one model to sort of optimize the design. So now we're looking at the CAD model and the first thing you're gonna notice on the front are the little mounting nubs for the plastic face shield. And those are the same as the Prussia RC2, so it's compatible with that design as well as my previous design. From the side, you'll see that the profile is much slimmer and so that's gonna to contribute to a very much decreased print time. And now I'm gonna point out here this little sloping sort of angled feature, swept feature if you wanna call it that. And this is where the shield sits on your forehead. And so you can see that this is the position that you would wear it in here. And that feature there contributes to a higher degree of comfort on your actual bare skin because you are not wanting to use any sort of foam in this particular design because the foam can trap things like bacteria, viruses, and all that sort of thing. On the underside here, you'll see that I'm pointing out the cover for the top of the forehead. And so I think that's an improvement over a few designs out there where this area is all open. And the other thing you're gonna notice is that although there's cover, there's still a tiny little slit here. And this is key for comfort and for fit as that's gonna allow the shield to bend and conform to your head a little bit better. Now we're quickly gonna look at the straps that go behind your head, and these are the PLA straps. So you can see that the model is nestable. I have five different straps here to optimize the print space on a printer bed, and they have to be printed in a geometry that's close to what would be in service um, because PLA is flexible, but it's not as flexible as say TPU. So it has to take on that general shape of being in service. If you flex it too much, it could break. Unlike the TPU, which you see here, I can fit twice as many on my print bed because I can really squish the model down into a smaller shape because it won't matter. Once it comes off the print bed, the TPU is very flexible. It's also still very strong. I can flex into any position, any sort of shape I want it to conform to, pull on it and it won't break. So the TPU is ideal, but you can get away with the PLA models. And so this is the actual printed model here and all of the same features from the CAD model are there, but I wanna focus on these back straps. These ones here are printed in PLA. I do have a TPU model that I printed here. You can see it's much more flexible, but I wanna demonstrate with the PLA model to show you that it does work in PLA. And so in order to tighten this thing, it works a lot like a zip tie. You can sort of just push it in and it makes this area smaller. There's adjustment on both sides. So you have more adjustability. Now to make this thing looser, Pulling out is more difficult and that is by design because you don't want this thing to loosen while it's around your head, but it's pretty easy. You can either brute force it if you really, really want, or you can take your thumb and forefinger and squeeze around this loop and then just pull it. And that sort of loosens it up just enough to get these notches to pull out. And then you have a larger area here for a larger head. 
Now, the PLA will eventually fail as if you continually adjust this thing over and over again. If you leave it at one setting, it will likely last indefinitely, but I would say if you adjust it over and over and over, you're probably gonna get maybe 20 or 30 uses out of it before the PLA fatigues. TPU, on the other hand, is what I would definitely recommend. This is the first time I'm printing with TPU and don't be scared of it. It's actually really easy to print with. I can share my print settings if you guys ask me for them in the comment section down below. But this stuff is so resilient, it's so durable, you can pull and pull and pull and flex it and it will not break and it will not fail. It's so good and so easy to use. Definitely try this out if you haven't already. In addition to redesigning the entire mask, I also redesigned the little lower face shield part that fits on the bottom of the clear sheet of plastic in order to give it a little bit more shape at the bottom. This is an original Prussia RC2 one, and you can see that they made the walls really, really thin, and it's very flimsy, and after a couple times of installing and removing those shields, they tend to separate. Now, this of course is not great because then it renders this thing useless and the shield will pop out. I made mine a little bit beefier here and I decided to also increase the swept area so it gives the shield a little bit more shape than this smaller Prussia RC2 one. This guy here also has a lead in, might be a little bit difficult to see in the camera, but it's got a bit of a lead in there and it's easier to actually slip the shields in there and the spacing is a little different as well. I'm using half millimeter PETG sheets. I'm not sure, I don't remember at least off the top of my head what the Prussia design was using, but for these half millimeter sheets, this works excellent. It's easy to get the sheet in, it's easy to get it out, but it still provides enough friction that it holds the shield in place and then that added thickness doesn't cause those layers to separate. One of the other things I designed for you guys to make this whole process a little bit easier is a drilling guide for the holes in the plastic face shields. And you can see here, it's got a bit of an L shape to it. And so that's a reference edge for the top of your plastic face shields. You can stack up to 10 half millimeter thick face shields and drill through 10 at once. The center two holes are mandatory. The outer two holes, you can choose to drill the ones off the top here, which are in line with these two, and that will fit your face shield far from your face. Or you can choose to drill the offset holes down here, and that'll fit the shield closer to your face. You can, I guess, also drill both if you want, but I don't think it's ideal to have more holes in your face shield, as the whole idea is that you get optimal coverage. Now this guide here is compatible with the new version. It's also compatible with my previous version if you're still printing those. And so by drilling those offset holes in the previous version, you can also use that to adjust the angle of the face shield and not just use the back of the headband if you find it a little bit uncomfortable to angle the headband. So that pretty much covers the new design guys and I hope you put it to good use. I know I am, I have my printer going as often as I possibly can in order to provide PPE for anyone who needs it or requests it from me. Now you may also wanna look into donating this PPE to your local nursing home or old age home as they're being hit pretty hard right now and they're not as well equipped as a hospital would be. If you guys wanna to donate to my effort and help out with me, you can hit the link in the description down below to buy me a coffee. Any of those small donations I'll put towards buying filament for this particular effort. And if I can get enough support, I will buy a second printer that I can run 24 seven, doubling my output. Now, I've also reached out to printer companies and 3D printer filament companies who really don't seem all that interested in assisting my particular efforts. And that's okay, but uh, if you guys do happen to know anybody who can help me out, please reach out to me in the comments section down below. I do read all of the comments. I try and respond to all of them as well. And I would love to know if you know somebody that could help out. Otherwise, just stay at home, stay healthy, and stay safe.